Agents of Fan. 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 Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Agents of Fandom podcast. My name is Garrett Blaney, and I'm going to be hosting today without TJ for the first time in the history of the show, actually, which feels uh, feels a little bit weird. It feels a little bit weird. TJ is out in Chicago right now at the FanDuel uh, Daily Fantasy Baseball World Championships or something important like that, trying to win a lot of money. So good luck to you, TJ. We miss you so much. Uh, but I am joined by two of my fellow fellow agents, uh, Jaden and Jade, not to be confused. How are you guys doing today? Welcome. Thank you for joining me in, in TJ's uh, stead. Absolutely. Of course. <laughs> how, how have you guys been doing lately? You guys have been you guys have been kind of holding up the agents of fandom. It's very active. It's big lately. shoes to fill, honestly. Especially <laughs> like me. I've never done anything like this before. I, everything that I've ever posted on Instagram, Twitter, like anything is just for fun and just like my own thing. But joining the group has just been so much fun. And I just want to want to help out, make everyone proud. <laughs> yeah, well, you joined us on the live stream um, for Comic-Con a couple, you know, like a month ago now and absolutely knocked it out of the park. So TJ and Ruben and I, we're like, we have to find ways to get her on more often and, and to be doing more things and, and crushing it with the your, your Instagram polls and stuff. So we knew that we had to attach you to the team so that we could level up and you are absolutely filling those shoes. So thank you so much. You. And Jaden, Jaden, absolutely filling in shoes for TJ, posting on socials, crushing the article game, um, TikTok game, real game. What's your secret, buddy? <laughs> Dude, honestly, I don't have a secret. I just let it fly and sometimes they 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 attract and sometimes they flop but it's part of the gig dude that's 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 part of being a content creator right or an yeah. entertainment steward as i like to say i want to i want to branch from the content creator thing <laughs> entertainment steward but uh you gotta roll with the punches right sometimes you lose sometimes you win but uh i'm curious what's what's your favorite like i know you do a couple little segments so what's your favorite segment that you're doing right now i me personally, I enjoy your your like style videos. You style your your uh, outfits to certain characters, so like that's my favorite one of yours right now. But I'm curious, what's like your favorite one to do? Well, I do a lot of. I mean, I just have been recently trying to uh, explore, you know, different types of content creating. Um, I really enjoy doing my Funko content, um, just because I love my Funkos, and you know, I'll make it look cool no matter what. But uh, yeah, I would say. Honestly, I've been doing a lot of theory vids and those have been fun. Like Hulk bringing in Venom. Just saying. That was, <laughs> that was, uh, okay. Well, now you got to explain it a little bit for everyone listening who doesn't know the theory, but you told that to me and I was like, dude, get that on the talk now. Get that on the reels right now. Cause that is fire and that could be something. So explain that to everyone real quick and then, yeah, we'll, and so then we'll start to move on and talk about Shield. Yeah, yeah. So in the first episode, um, I watched right over it. I didn't even think about it when I w the first episode came out. But then, like, I did a rewatch, you know, just to get those little details that you miss, like when you watch it the first time around. Um, and there was this like jar of black goop, almost. I wouldn't call it go um, a liquid, something like that. Um, and Jen was like really eyeing it up, so I was like, hmm, interesting. So. Then I was like, okay, his lab's in Mexico. He spent all this time in the lab. He's alone. Like he got this whole smart Hulk thing going on. Once he's done with that, it's like, what else? What does he do now? What does he test? Like, what is he doing there? He's just chilling with a bar. Like, is that all he's doing? No, it can't be. So I thought, okay, well, Venom or Eddie Brock or Tom Hardy's Venom uh, at the end of his movie, I believe, or I forget where, where it happened, but he ended up in Mexico. Um, he ended up at a bar in Mexico and long story short, he gets there, he's questioning all these things. And then he just gets sent back to his universe. But there's that small little speck of venom goop that's left behind. So I'm like, okay, you put these two in Mexico, you put a scientist in Mexico who probably can detect these types of uh, disturbances in the universe or, you know, on his planet at least. Um, and of course it's Tony Stark's tech. So he's got, he's got to have something that can detect it. 
Uh, and then, you know, he goes to scope it out, picks up some venom goop. What is this? Testing it and stuff. So, hey, if he brings venom and and that character to the greater mcu and introduces him to someone like i don't know spider-man that would be really dope yeah i think you're onto something i think the the symbiotes are maybe on the way and uh that could be the first or the, the second tease i guess but uh that's that's a very interesting theory and you've been crushing on the theory so keep that up and uh Let's get into the She-Hulk talks. So, Jade, I'm going to start off with you. What's your, like, general thoughts on the series so far? Kind of spoiler-free. Spoiler-free so far. For me, this show has meant a lot. Um, I'm a criminal justice major, so not necessarily law, but I've taken law classes and whatnot. I'm a woman. I was an athlete in college, so I, you know, bulk up a little bit when, <laughs> when we had to. So I just feel like this show is just everything that i could have ever wanted um the only she hulk that i had read in the comics prior to the show was just like the marvel verse she hulk edition um and i just fell in love with it i love i love the comedy i know some people don't care for it but i absolutely love the comedy i grew up watching law shows like law and order svu ncis all of that stuff so this just feels like a perfect blend of comedy reality and the superhero you know world the mcu world so i just that's just like my general general thoughts on that so that's all i'm gonna say i just love it dearly <laughs> yeah no i completely agree with you i was talking with uh my partner nina uh, we were watching the show together and she was like she was telling me like i i love the show it's my favorite one so far um for a lot of the same aspects as you like you know the the woman thing and 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 the feminism and the standing up for and obviously trashing the <laughs> dude bros who who suck um but uh but beyond that you know she she feels like Jen is like the most relatable character to like us you know like totally. she was like if i was she hulk like i literally would be the exact same way as her and i feel the same way it's so relatable it's so fun um and it's it doesn't it's not like necessarily groundbreaking in its own ways, but it doesn't need to be. It's fun and it and it hits a spot. It tells a message and it does a really good job of telling that message. Yeah, I think it's just really grounded too. Like it's it's this phase four has felt a bit more cosmic and more about the mystical arts, and of course we get that with these last few episodes. But it just feels like a very like normal show that anybody could enjoy. Like, you don't really need to, like, of course, it makes a little bit more sense if you know prior MCU knowledge, but I feel like, like, you could just turn on this show and anybody could like it. Like, my parents are loving this show. <laughs> so, like, it's really just for any age range, I think, at this point. Any age range, any person, gender, sexual orientation, anybody. It's it, This show is for everybody. Yeah, I agree. Jaden, how how what are you feeling through the first four episodes? Well, just kind of to piggyback off of what you guys said, it's it's definitely a really grounded show, super relatable. But I just think Phase Four as a whole has done a really good job in like touching on real world problems and real world issues that um, they they did, but not really in like the first few phases. So to see it all kind of happening now and just like the trajectory of where it's going, I, I really love that. And I think She-Hulk definitely does a great job in, in furthering that that phase four legacy with, you know, touching on all that stuff. So I love it. I love the comedy and I just, you know, I'm just waiting for Matt Murdock. So. <laughs> Not that, not that the show needs Matt Murdock to be any better, but yes, we are all <laughs> waiting for Matt Murdock. I'm curious how how does this episode kind of stack up to the other, to the other episodes in your guys' opinion? For we'll start with you, Jaden, or Jade. <laughs> Either yeah, way, Jade, you go first. We basically you go first. just have the same name. Just throw an N on the end, and it's fine. <laughs> but for me, it's it's definitely one of my favorite episodes. I think because I well, first of all, I loved episode one so much just because of I a sucker for origin stories. Sorry if that's a controversial opinion to some people but i love origin stories anyways i loved this episode mostly i think for the dating app like experience because me personally i don't like them i've been on them i you know i've 
gone on dates with people on dating apps and it's just like we've said it's just so relatable like the dating apps are not fun they feel like she said like dehumanizing but that's just how things work now i guess like you can obviously still meet people in person but it's easy to meet people online or it's not easy i don't don't know sorry i should probably say that but (laughs) you know what i mean and then i also just want to shout out like not really trying to spoil but like the fight kind of scene at the end i love that i love the team up there so yeah i'm gonna just say that well we'll 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 definitely get into that a little bit later uh and i'm a little bit conflicted on that because i met nina on tinder and that is a bright spot but generally both of our experiences on tinder before that were like pretty horrible so like like, while it while it ended up working like it sucked no totally (laughs) like there's definitely the chances that you could meet someone that you connect with and that you end up like dating and being with for a long time whatever that turns out to be but you gotta wade through sea of bullshit yeah i'm gonna say 95 (laughs) percent of the time it's just straight just (laughs) garbage i'm sorry (laughs) no no one of the guys that hit her up before me asked her to be in a porn video and she was like gonna have to respectfully decline that but like i appreciate you giving me that offer but uh yeah so but i mean the bar wasn't very high when i came in after that so that's all that's how i that's how i got to fly in under the radar but but yeah the overall usually i think you'll find that the experience is generally pretty uh horrifying yeah. so i think the episode did a really good job of of uh relaying that Jaden, how about you where does this episode stack up uh i really enjoyed it and i know this is a she hulk show but i enjoyed it because of wong and and madison the most i think those two together should be the forever cameo of the mcu and i will never ever get tired of it um, the post credit scene with those two was so funny. It was so simple, but so funny. And the more they do that, the more I'm going to love it. No, I found myself being a little bit frustrated with Wong throughout the episode for like not letting her in. <laughs> so then when the post credit scene came and they were like together, like really leaning into it, I was like, yes, buddy, <laughs> lean into it. And now I just feel like uh, a Wong appearance without Madison might just be incomplete. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wongers. Wongers. But yeah. Wongers. Wongers. Excuse yeah. me. Excuse me. But yes, that was definitely one of one of my favorite aspects of this episode. And this personally was my favorite episode so far. I um, thought it was very funny yet grounded. It, it even took like the mystical arts to a very grounded level with uh, with Donnie Blaze, <laughs> not to be confused with uh, any Ooh, other was... significant people with the last name Blaze, but uh, Donnie Blaze and his like his little magic show in the really empty theater that was not very riveting and a very unenthusiastic crowd. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen hacks on HBO, but uh, it reminded me of that so much. It's hilarious. Uh, You should watch it, but uh, it's essentially about this, this, like, she's like a young uh, bisexual woman. She's in her twenties and she is like a comedy writer and she gets axed from her job because she's kind of controversial. And then she gets put with this, this uh she's like the longest female comedian in las vegas so she has to move to las vegas and like help her write jokes but this woman is like a bitch hilarious (laughs) but a bitch and uh she like they show her sometimes like bombing performances and it's just super (laughs) awkward and like that gave me those vibes but super hilarious show worth watching if you guys haven't um but did you guys notice that in another scene when they're they're like uh discussing the legal terms with donnie blaze and wong and his like hype man and jen uh that donnie is wearing sex pants no like his pants what? say sex on them repeatedly like the pattern is just like sex 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 and like this red like uh embroidered. No. it's you guys have to go back and see that it's <laughs> It's delightfully horrible. Like this guy sucks in every single way. And yeah. this like tiny aspect just heightens that. And I love it. <laughs> oh God. But it's also the fact that how many times he mentions heat, it's like heat, heat, heat. It's like, dude, I get it. You know, you're inching towards a Johnny blaze, but like, dude, it's like too much. <laughs> too much, too much. And I love Jen's dad too. Like 
coming into her apartment and like trying to protect her still and just being like i'm gonna dig holes for these guys if i need to like dig these graves and stuff like i i really love that aspect obviously she's a strong female woman not just a hulk but a strong female woman and doesn't need that but uh it, it, it helps a little bit. It's nice I, to have that. I appreciated that because my dad, anytime like I go to see my parents and hang out or whatever, anytime I get home, he always says, okay, glad to see you lock up for the night. Like he, my dad always checks in with me, like is the door locked or do you need anything? Like, are you okay? And I, yeah, love that. As aspect. all good dads should. <laughs> yeah. As oh, all good dads totally, should. totally. Especially for their little girl, you know, that's like a big deal. Yeah, or even if their little girl is uh, not so little, as a six foot seven, it still applies. Yeah, exactly. it still yeah. applies. That's still your that's still your baby. So I get it. Exactly. All right. Another thing I want to talk about is the Tinder or the excuse me the matcher dates that she goes on. There's a couple of uh, maybe not so eligible bachelors, <laughs> and one of them in particular is uh, pretty interested in her abilities. Her the impenetrability of her skin which calls to mind a a, a a wrecking crew that we saw in the past episode try to uh take some blood from her so you guys think that there's any merit to that do you think this guy is just like a superhero nerd or do you think maybe he like is trying to find out some inside scoop on uh, on jen Pardon he's totally me? just one of us he what he's totally just one so of us oh just we just want to know just all one of us. Yeah, just all the <laughs> just, just get to know everything I, about. I mean, skin, bro. Well, if I was asking her a bunch of questions, I wouldn't be like, "How impenetrable is your skin?" I don't know. That's like <laughs> that wouldn't be like high on my list of questions. But that's just me. But maybe that guy's just like it down the rabbit hole. I I won't comment. But Jade, what, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say, part of me feels like maybe like that could definitely be, you know, that's like a thing that I've seen people talk about on Twitter. Like, who is this weird guy asking all these questions? But then also part of me wants to just think that this is just a fun, silly show. And that this guy is just a creeper. Like there are creepy dudes out there who just ask very weird, like fetishized, creepy questions. So there's just a like sadly there's just a chance that he's just a really creepy dude <laughs> too like yeah i, I mean I, was, I feel like most of them were not that great <laughs> right like the first guy was like just a douche like oh i'm just a, i go to the gym and i can deadlift 600 pounds and i'm not even a superhero like cool dude <laughs> okay, I'm, buddy. I'm proud of you that's sick and then i don't then, take steroids so right, right and then the next guy is like the polar opposite like i'm an artsy guy and i made a movie and he's about a a, a lawyer and this and that and then this other next guy is just a straight up creep like that could definitely be just it but i also hold out the theory that you know it, it's gonna come back up later in the show i think it could but i mean i don't know either way will be either way it'll be relevant and we'll be happy so <laughs> exactly. it's exactly. Point made <laughs> exactly so what do you guys think about what do you guys think about the uh the doctor that she eventually takes home uh has some nice conversations with and then has you know a a, a fun little night <laughs> Jane, what, do you guys, what do you guys think of that <laughs> jen 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 has her fun right in the comics so it's nice to bring that into into the show a little bit but it ends kind of poorly the next morning so that's really where i'm going with this um in the first episode you know we kind of spend a lot of it with bruce explaining how it's like kind of not that fun to be a superhero. And like, these are all the things you're going to need to know to be prepared for that. And she really doesn't want any of that. And then we spend the next three episodes kind of dealing with the fact that things are better for her as the She-Hulk. Um, so in the morning, she she starts to make breakfast for them and she is obviously in her normal form. And he comes out and is like, I'm just going to get out of here. Um, and it's sad, you know, it's, yeah. it's, Jen is great as a person, super smart, funny. Um, what's the deal there? Yeah. So it's, it's sad to see. What are you guys thoughts on that? Go ahead, Jaden. I'll start yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's like, it kind of sucks that, um, that's like the kind of reality that, you know, we live in, but I don't know. It's like, you know, she, 
Jen is also She-Hulk. Like, it's not like there's two different conscious, you know, they're not battling. It's not two different people. It's the same person. You're talking to the same personality. So the fact that it was all essentially based on like appearance, um, that sucks. Um, I'm, I'm a very big into like a personality guy. So like if we vibe, that's all I really care about. You know what I mean? And I feel like that should be the precedent for everybody, but unfortunately it's not. So. Yeah, sadly, the thing that I like literally just thought about, it's kind of like, you know, it makes me think about when a girl is, or a guy, you know, is wearing makeup or is like, does themselves up to go out and on a date and like see either someone for the first time, second time, whatever. And then they finally like stay over together or they just see each other without the makeup on and it's like you maybe you look a little bit different because of course like makeup just enhances like the beauty that you already have but i'm thinking maybe he just didn't like the way she looked when she's not hulk because you know when she's when she's she hulk she's big muscular toned like fit body great hair everything like the skin's perfect but like as a normal human being, I mean, Tatiana Maslany is beautiful. Don't like, I just mean for the meaning of the of ma- potential meaning of what this is. But, you know, it's like, I, I don't know. It just makes me sad. Like I've seen people on Twitter and stuff say, I want a natural looking girl. And it's a picture of Kim Kardashian. And I'm just like, oh, hang on. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> well, yeah, one okay, second, buddy. let me just. <laughs> just retreat back into my hole and put all this makeup on. No, I'm just kidding. But it just makes me sad. I'm like, she's Jen's. Aw, I love Jen. Like even like my mom. We all love like, Jen. Yeah, my Absolutely. mom after the first couple episodes was like, I just really like her character. Like she's just really like relatable and fun to like watch. And I'm like, yeah, she's great. I don't know why people don't like her <laughs> in real life and in the show. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. I- I think my thoughts on it are that, um, you know, we just spoke about how when she went on all those different dates with it, we saw like a bunch of different types of guys, right? Mm-hmm. And then I think this is a, this is sh- just showcasing another one of those guys, right? He's the kind of guy who t- it knows what you want to hear, is able to tell you what you want to hear, gets what he wants, and then leaves in the end. Uh, and so it was just... While it was sad to see for Jen, it I think it really has no reflection on Jen. It's really another way for okay. the show to make a point mm-hmm. of of how males treat females. And I think it's, you know, probably not as many people that should are going to think about it. Like, more people should think about and reflect on these moments in the show. Like, a lot of guys that are watching this that probably shouldn't do this but won't. Um, but... <laughs> Hey, listen to the Agents of Fandom podcast and you will learn about these things and we will teach Absolutely. you as we learn ourselves because we're yeah. not perfect. But Take, uh, it. Take you know. it from a girl. We just want to be treated like we're just normal. Just We just want to be normal, okay? We don't want to talk about ourselves the whole time. I don't want you to talk about yourself the whole time. Let's talk about... Let's talk about it's a mix. Thing. There's yeah. a, a balance, as all things should be. Where's yeah. Thanos when you need him? Oh my <laughs> goodness gracious! <laughs> Where's Thanos when you need him? <laughs> all right, let's move on. Let's move on from that sad, depressing stuff, and uh, let's 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 chat about two final topics. We'll we'll chat about that fun little fight scene, and then uh, the little the little ending stinger. So, Jade. I know you're super excited about about this team up fight scene, so I'm gonna let you kind of explain it and uh, go into it. I mean, well, first of all, I just want to shout out the fact that Wong Wongers watches Sopranos, which is just so <laughs> hilarious to me because, like, why would the Sorcerer Supreme be watching um, a show about the Italian mob? Like. <laughs> why and i just so don't question all, the source of supreme no i don't as you have, if you've ever seen my twitter i'm all about that wong supremacy so please i am a stan i'm a wong stan and but anyway so i just love this team up because i just love seeing team ups between like the mystic art side and the more i mean she's not like she's a superhuman but like a more grounded like fighting like shooting and combat yeah so yeah. i just love the mixture of the two how she was like is well essentially to explain it the donny blaze no yeah donny blaze 
uh, op accidentally opens a portal and lets all of these goblins and demons fly out of what maybe is hell. Mr. Memphis, don't confirm. Yeah, Jake, <laughs> Jake the goat. Yeah, who's Jake? Anyways, so, Who knows? <laughs> so all of who knows? Madison are flying out. Wong's got it. You know, he Donnie Blaze gets the portal open to find Wong somehow. Wong's trying to help out. Wong goes to find Jen. Jen's about to get all busy with her doctor man, but then gets interrupted. <laughs> has to come help Wong, and this team up is just. <laughs> I think it's just hilarious, but also very practical at the same time with Jen's strength, super abilities to jump, catch, smash things together, and then throw things at the portal and for Wong to like sling them up, throw them through. I just think it was just such, it's probably one of my favorite team ups ever in the MCU. I just think it's so polar opposite sides of the fighting worlds coming together. <laughs> Yeah, out of everyone Wong knows, you know, he's like, I'm going to grab my lawyer for this. Exactly, exactly. That's like <laughs> I the love that. Pinnacle of superhuman law. Like, yeah, exactly. You know? That's what we <laughs> wanted from this show. Random exactly. superhero team house. And this is exactly. this is what we got. And I love the demon things. They give me like gremlin vibes. And then how yeah. they just like level up as the fight goes on they just like grow and get bigger it's so wacky so campy yeah. so stupid that it's hilarious and it fits perfectly with this episode of grounding the mystic arts you know right. and making this thing that for we just had this massive blockbuster movie dr strange of the multiverse of madness that you know goes deep into this well of mystic arts and it's very mm -hmm. serious and deep and it's got an important ending that kills wanda and now we're we're chasing little demons in a in a stupid theater uh because a guy with sex pants ruined the sopranos for wong that's essentially why this all happened yeah. is because he ruined sopranos for wong um so you gotta love you gotta love that connection mm -hmm. um and the last thing is titania Titania coming in at the end, uh, being cleared of her charges, and then filing a trademark for She-Hulk and uh, suing Jen. So what do you guys think that's going to lead? It's just so petty. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's very petty. It's very petty. And all the marketing that we've seen of Titania, like uh going out and uh, like spray painting the posters and everything. Uh, I love that, by the way. Great marketing. Um, but it just all makes sense with this character that we're now getting doing this ridiculously petty act. And uh, hopefully we see that in court next week. That's what I'm hoping for. Jane. Do we think that Matt Murdock is going to be representing Titania <laughs> in this lawsuit? That would be so sick. I want to see those two go at it in the courtroom. I, I want to or... see that. Is or he going to represent Jen? Jen? Yeah. Yeah. That could be, that could be pretty interesting. Like she gets a recommendation like, Hey, you should call this guy. <laughs> and he flies yeah. out from New York. Well, there's been theories. He's that a really good lawyer. Show up. <laughs> yeah. And he says, Hey, I know this guy who's a really good lawyer and enter. Matt Murdock. <laughs> Give me, give me Favreau. I, I'll take any Favreau I can get. Uh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so we think next week is the week that we're going to get Matt Murdock then? I, I think, think it's possible. That would Jayden, be go ahead. The You're the Daredevil stand. You go for it. Yeah. No, I think that would be the most liable way to bring him in. I mean, if you're going to have a court case where Jen is not the lawyer, it might as well be someone else that's a lawyer in the MCU. So, I mean, that would be really cool. I, I would love to see that. Yeah. yeah. And we're kind of in new territory now because none of the press got screeners past episode four. So yeah. nobody right. knows what's going to happen now next we're week, uh, what we're going to see. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I think we're we're at that halfway point where he's got to come in at some point now. Like, they're not right. just going to have him come in for the last two episodes. They They want to have one of the selling points of this show be in for a good mm -hmm. amount of time. So I think, I think it's perfect timing. And then who, I, I think it would be actually more hilarious if he ends up representing Titania, because I think it would be 
funny if Jen's kind of like, oh, well, I'll just represent myself. Like, this is this is easy. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to win this. And then enter Matt Murdock representing the person that She-Hulk hates the most at this point. Yeah, and... you're right. I like that. I like that a lot better. That, I just think it would be funny. Play a lot better. And then maybe something happens. Because we've seen, I'm, I'm sure we've all seen by now, the little, like, TV promos where they do team up at that one point. And or Dare, excuse me, Daredevil and She Hulk team up at the, uh, at one point, and he gets Mike Wazowski by like the letters, you know. <laughs> yes. So I I think, I think this is going to be a fun yeah. way to like that would be a fun way to like add some competition into their relationship too because right. they kind of have they have like a kind of spicy relationship. Uh, so I think that would be a nice way to add that in from from the right. jump. And I just want to say I can't wait for funny Daredevil. So sorry everybody who's not ready for that. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, to anyone listening, newsflash, characters can have dimensions. It is what it is. Yeah. I myself have dimensions, as do you <laughs> both. Uh, it just is what it is as humans. So I'm excited to explore another side of Daredevil as well. And uh, we will be breaking that down next week with Emma, Woo-hoo! our very own managing editor of Agents of Fandom, as well as Lee Swift. Woo! who hosts the Ticket to Reality podcast with TJ, myself, and Emma, and was a finalist on The Circle Netflix Season 2. So stay tuned for that next week. Uh, Some website plugs. We got House of the Dragon uh, episode reviews up. We're going to have weekly reviews for that done by Agent CJ, uh, a rising star in the ranks. Just Yeah, just an absolute (laughs) young gun who has big things coming for him. We love C Slay. <laughs> we love C Slay. We do indeed. Uh, we got some Rings of Power, a Ring of Power review up by Jaden, um, some Ticket to Reality articles, I believe. And then, of course, check out the Agents of Fandom store on our website. Absolutely. Look at that merch. Uh, Ruben and I are going to be working in the next couple of weeks to add some more exciting things to that. Maybe not the next couple of weeks, maybe the next couple of months, but. Just know that some plans are in the works to add some fresh new merch and uh, and uh, have some cool stuff roll out. And then other than that, we will be covering D23 on Saturday. Uh, after the fact, we discussed today we're not going to live stream it, but we will record immediately after and then release it that night. Uh, and we'll cover the Marvel video games um, panel from Friday as well. If you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like the video and subscribe, comment, share it with your friends. Um, After next week, I believe we have Andor coming out. I'm not sure on that, on the timing of that, but it's very, it's coming up very shortly. And we will be discussing the first three episodes with Jamie Dirac from comicbook.com, a past guest, a good friend of ours, and we can't wait to discuss that. And uh, that should be it. Thank you guys for joining me today. Um, tell tell the people where they can find you guys. Jade, we'll start with you. <laughs> um, well, you can find me on Instagram. It's, well, Instagram and Twitter. It's just my full name, Jade Rafalo. Not going to spell it. Just let you guys go find it. Uh, and then you can also check out my TikTok. I haven't been as active because I'm on vacation right now. But it's at Jade Talks Movies and Talks T-O-K-S. That is so clever, so clever, so <laughs> smart. Easy to remember. Go yeah. look that up. Give her a like and follow. Jaden, where about what about yeah. you, my man? Where can the people find you? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter, Jaden C M Duran. It's actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like right here. Um, but also you can find me on TikTok, Agents of Fandom. Check me out. I'm pretty much all over that shit. So and Jade and Layla. He is the guy. We have a bunch, of people. Have a bunch yeah. of people on there. So. Good time. I sh- I shook my butt on there, so go go check it out. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I remember I found out about that because someone in the one of our agents who is married in the group chat was like, I had to click away from that very quickly. Um, so if you want to see that, go to the Agents of Fandom TikTok. And, and I didn't even know that Jen was going to be shaking her butt in the show, so that was just an ode to Jen. So. Yeah. It was uh, foreshadowing. We definitely knew <laughs> it was definitely on purpose, and we are good yeah. like that. <laughs> exactly. We helped write the show. Sorry, Jaden. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> 
No, you're good. <laughs> that, that was all. I was just check us out on AOF, the AOF TikTok. Yeah, to AOF TikTok, uh, Agents Fandom on Twitter, Agents of Fandom on Instagram, uh, YouTube, Facebook, wherever else you get your socials. Uh, find us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Don't forget to like, subscribe, give us a, a, a nice review there. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Peace. Peace.